Okay, so we're gonna go over quiz number six. I'm gonna go share the screen. Uh, okay, share. Okay, so, okay, for our number six, okay, the quiz number six, now question number one for the circuit shown, solve for the resident frequency. So we know the resident frequency is FR equals one over the quantity uh, two pi, the square root of LC. Okay, so we want to put, uh, so that will be one divided by the quantity two, two times 3.14 times the square root of the quantity 10 micro Henry times uh, 158.3 picofarad. That comes to, once you do your calculation, come to four megahertz. Okay, so your resonant is four megahertz. So the answer is B as in uh, boy for number one. Number two, for the, say, yes. Didn't we go over that last, last week already? Did we go number six or did we go we, number five? Yeah, we did. We, we went over this, this one already. Oh, okay. So <laughs> okay, so if we had gone over it, then uh, it's all good then. And Doesn't hurt to do it a second time. Yeah, it's always good reinforcement, okay? Please, Mr. Fran. Okay, so for the second showing, solve for XL at resonant. So XL at FR equals 2 pi FR XL1. Okay, so you substitute that in. So XL comes to 151.3 ohms. So, so the answer is A as an apple for two. Okay. All right. For number three, for the circuit shown, the total impedance ZT at resonant is, okay, at uh, resonant, XL and XC is going to get cancel each other, leave you just uh, R square. So square root of R square, just leave you with R. Ri, so in this case it's a five ohms. So the answer is C as in cat for three. Number four for the circuit shown, the total uh, I total current IT at the resonant is it's going to be VT divided by ZT or 100 volt uh, millivolt divided by five ohms. So that comes to 20 milliamps. Okay, so the answer is A as an apple for four. Okay, for five, for the circuit showing, the phase angle between VT and IT is zero degree because uh, the only thing that affected by the phase angles is in XC and XL, since XC and XL cancel each other. So therefore you're going to have a zero degree. Resistant doesn't have, have a phase shift. So it's a zero degree, okay? So the answer is C as in cat for number five. For number six, for the circuit shown, the Q of the coil is, uh, so Q equal XL divided by RI. So XL was 251.3 ohms divided by five ohms. So that's kept to 50.27 uh, for Q. So the answer is A as an apple for number six. Okay. If anybody have questions, just uh, go ahead and uh, bring it up. If not, I just go ahead and go forward uh, so we can get this one done quickly. Okay, for the circuit showing the bandwidth BW, uh, it's equal to FR divided by Q. So FR was uh, four megahertz, that same thing as 4,000 kilohertz divided by 50.27 of the Q. That's what uh, the yield would fit 79.58 kilohertz. So the answer is B as in boy for seven. For number eight, for the circuit shown, the lower cutoff frequency is so lower cutoff is the FR minus the bandwidth divided by two. So we got the resonant frequency. So that 4,000 kilohertz minus 79.58 kilohertz divided by two. So that's come to 3960 kilohertz. So the answer is A as an apple for number eight. Okay. All right, for number nine, uh, what type of waveform does not change polarity with time? Okay, as we can see right here, the only one that doesn't change as time goes forward, it stays the same. So therefore, the only one that works is the DC wave. Okay, so C as in cat for number nine. Okay, it's a 600 ohms load resistor connected to a generator with an open circuit voltage of 20 volt peak to peak and an output impedance of 600 ohms, uh, the generate output frequent voltages. So you got two resistance. One is the 600 ohms that is on the generator and one is on the load. 
So this 20 volt would be split between the two resistance. So one would be 10 ohms and uh, 10 volt, and the other one would be 10 volt. So the answer is C as in cat for number 10. Okay. For number 11, for the circuit shown, the resonant frequency FR. Okay. So you substitute that into the formula. So the FRs come to 1591.55 kilohertz. So I just round it up to 1592. So A as an apple for number 11. Number 12 for the circuit shown, the inductive reactant XL at resonant is. So XL, it goes two pi F, uh, F resonant uh, times L of the inductor. Okay, you substitute that in. So XL come to 100 ohms. So the answer is C as in cat for number 12. Number 13, for the circuit shown, the resistance of the coil, R coil, it's XL divided by Q coil. So R coil equals XL divided by Q coil. So 100 ohms divided by 50. So that comes to two ohms. So the answer is C, okay? So your little RI or the R, right? The, the coil is only two ohms. Okay, for the circuit shown, the total impedance ZT at resonant is, Okay, like we said before, ZT equals the square root of the quantity, quantity R plus R core quantity square plus XL minus XC quantity square. And you saw that, and we know that XL going to cancel out XC. So this one is zero. So this one is going to be R plus R core quantity square, and then take a square root of that. So same thing, leave you with R plus R coil. So therefore it's on eight ohms plus the two ohms. So it comes up to 10 ohms. So the answer is A as an apple for 14. Okay. All right, for number 15, for the circuit shown, the total current IT at resonant is, so IT go VT divided by ZT. Okay, so uh, VT is 10 volt divided by 10 ohms. So that's give you one amp. So the A, A so A is the answer for Apple for number 15. 16 for the circuit shown, the inductive voltage VL at resonant is. So VL equals IT times XL. So you got the one amps times 100 ohms. So you have 100 volt peak to peak. So the answer is C as in cat for 16. Okay, for 17 at resonant a series RLC circuit access uh, mainly, uh, they're going to be, like I said, XL minus XC, they're going to cancel out each other, leaving you X would be zero. So that's zero. So square root of R squared, just R. So it becomes just a resistance. So, and we know that resistance, the current and the voltage, there are no, uh, there's no phase shift at all. So the voltage is same, same phase. Okay. So the answer is C as in cat for 17. Okay, the impedance in a series RCL circuit at resonant is, so like I said, the impedance is just the square root. So Z is just the R total. In this case, uh, whatever the R total is, in this case, the R would be the minimum amount. So 18 is C as in cap, okay? So, so hopefully that to give you guys a quick review on the, on the basis of the resonant frequency, okay? And how to calculate the bandwidth, uh, the bandwidth and the quality of the coil. Okay. All right. So anybody have any question on this quiz? All right, everybody's good. Okay. So like Mr. Pham said, you know, this is almost the end of the semester. Uh, you still have one more month to go. Uh, uh, you can say three more weeks, so three more weeks until the, the end. So make sure that everything that you have done for AC, uh, AC1 assignment that is on the website, make sure you do them and make sure you upload it to the website, okay? We only have uh, almost half the student is not turning those assignments, okay? All right, so anybody have any question? Yeah, I got a quick question. Go ahead, Nicholas. Uh, you guys may have mentioned this. I kind of missed some of the beginning of this class uh, or this uh, session. Uh, okay. The final, do we have a date for that yet? Yeah, Mr. Pham said it's going to be August 27th, uh, 20, okay, cool. uh, 20, 25th, which is Thursday. Okay. All right. Okay, cool.
Thank you. And there's and there's no lab for that entire week. There will for that week. It's going to be yeah. a study session. So therefore, we won't be having a lab. Okay. Okay. Is there going to be a lecture or anything or no? Um, he's going to give you a little bit of uh, maybe a little bit of lecture, and then uh, so that way it's like I said, review session before the final yeah. exam. Okay, that's cool. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Any other question? Okay, back to you, Mr. Fan. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Okay, so. Let me share the, my iPad. Okay, so very short lecture on the power in the Asian circuit. Then we can go to the radio of uh, frequency. Okay, power in AC. You get the first thing is called a real power. That is the power dissipated in the resistor only. You know how to calculate the power through the resistor. They get three formula, P equal V time I, or P equal I square times R, or P equal V square divide to R. Okay, and the unit of the power will be a watt. Okay, the next one, we're talking about reactive power or reactive component. Okay. That means you can get either inductor or capacitor. Get what we get that reactive component. The product of the voltage and the current V equal B equal V M I is measured in the unit of phone ampere reactive. Okay, V A R. So basically that will tell you if you get a power in the capacitor or inductor, the formula will be P equal V time I. However, the unit will be V A R. The next one, apparent power for RLC circuit. The product of the total voltage VD and total current ID, P equal VD times ID, equal circuit apparent power. That means they combine R. L and C. If you want to calculate the power, they will be called apparent power. Unit of apparent power is VA. Okay, instead of what? What will be only real power? Power in AC circuit. Power factor, PF. When AC circuit containing inductance and capacitor, the power factor PF is the ratio of the real power in what to the apparent power in volt per in one ampere. This is expressed power factor PF equal real power divide to apparent power. Okay, unit in VA. Okay, and also 
they gave him to Ma a poison. For the series, Sergeant, BFP Gorn, Cosi, Theta, Z. Okay, that means theory, the very different, equal R divided to Z. For parallel circuit, PF equal cosine theta I. Okay, that's a very different between the current. I R over I T. Power is the red. At great work is that power uh, energy can over a period of time to have complete useful work. In electrical circuit, energy move electro. This energy is dissipated in the form of heat when electron flow through a resistance. Uh, what is the unit of electrical power? Real power is dissipated only in a resistance, like we already carrying you. Okay? That means the power dissipated in the resistance, they call real power. This is a formula you already know. Okay? I times E or I times V. B I square over time R or E square or V square over R. Three basic formula are used to compute real power in a resistance. This relationship of current voltage resistance and a power on through for A or B or C. Which one? Just telling me. When you're working on the left wall, you will be seeing. Uh, A, A, C only? A or B or C. You know the formula. We already said. P equal I time V. They, they're using E, let me find. I square time R. E square divide R. This is what we call it. real power. So if you have to do on that one, You see, like either A or B or C, tell me which one. You understand the detail? Is it answer A? No. No, it's for uh, C, both AC and DC. Okay, now I'm telling you. The formula they given to you here only apply for the real power. You think you get a real power, you get a reactant power, apparent power. Have to understand the reason, the difference between on that, that for, formula. Real power apply to a resistor only. Reactive power will be applied for the circuit with the inductive arc and capacity. And apparent power, that means the power applied for the circuit include R, L, and C. So I can tell you, the answer will be B for DC only, not AC. AC get a not for this formula, not formula. DC to get a AC to get a different formula.
In this circuit, the side ray appointed produce a side ray of the current I through a transistor R. Add the current and pointed XL by the plot in phase or our phase. A or B? A. Mm. Hey. hey, correct. If you're looking on the display between the pointed and the current here, you have to understand is it the in phase, our phase? Or they get a different phase. When the voltage and the current both going up, both going down, that will be in phase. If you get a voltage go up and the current going down, opposite, that will be our phase. If you see the voltage and the current, they shift it to the right. That means they get a phase different. Okay, multiply the multiply the instantaneous current value by correct bonding voltage produce power curve. So basically current and a voltage and you get that in the power. Okay, that is the power. In the power curve, try the frequency of the basic voltage and the current sideway. This is the average of the power, okay? This is the curve twice the frequency of the basic, I don't think, supposed to be no. The average power is indicated by the horizontal dark line. That means the average right here. When calculating, calculating the average power is the RMF value of current and voltage. So that's why you can see this is the formula to calculate the power. An ideal capacitor inductor does not convert energy to the heat. Okay? They're not converting energy to the heat. The reactive component store energy delivery to it from the generator. Then they return that energy to the circuitry. That means when they positive to get the power to get the Back up negative on the power will be returned. For one half cycle of the generator sideways, the reactive component draw energy from the generator. So basically, that one to get the power from the positive. The bandwidth is determined by upper lower cutoff frequency. We already get through that. Okay. And look like they get a band path filter or resonant. Same thing. Okay. This is the cutoff frequency going down 3 dB. And that will be telling you to get a lower cutoff, higher cutoff, and also you get a bandwidth. Then weight will be F2 minus F1. And the selectivity and the bandwidth of series RLC circuit depend on the circuit Q quality. Okay, that means basically the bandwidth divided by Q, and Q will be calculated by XL divide to R. During the other half cycle, the reactive component return power to the generator. So they not lost any power. The power consumption 
of the reactive component exactly equal amount of power return to the circuit. A real power consumed by an ideal reactive component. You can say for AC, you not lost any power. However, for real power, that means when the current through the resistor, electrical converting into the heat, okay? That means quite different. So I think it's supposed to be known. Power is not convert in to another form of energy, such as heat, it's called reactive power. That I'm just telling you, the current through the inductor or capacitor, okay, they cannot create any heat, they not lock anything. Reactive power is a product component across and the current through the reactive component. Unit reactive power will be born ampere reactive VAR. Okay. However, unit of the real power will be the watt. Okay, so that's what you have to Make sure you know, for the reactive power, that means power on capacity or inductive, the unit will be VAR, okay? The unit for the real power on the resistance will be what? In the circuit cell, the reactive power Q of capacitor C, Right here, A, okay. So, which one? It's uh, 10 milli uh, uh, volt ARS. Volt at ampere, right? Mm -hmm. That's a VAR, okay. Normally, your guy don't have to do anything but this thing. It's a good content, resistant, reactant, HL or HC. The generator must supply both the real power and reactive power. The real power will be on resistor. Reactor, reactive power will be on capacitor or inductor. Okay. To determine this generator power, that's what they get. Another one they call up, apparent power. Yeah. Multiply generator voltage by using apparent power equal VG generator time I. Only percentage of generator apparent power is converted to the real power and it dissipates in the circuit resistance at heat. Generator also supplies reactive power Q to the reactive component, which alternately consume and supply power Q. The ratio of the real power to apparent power is the power factor, PF. Remember, PF equals real power divided to apparent power. The power factor is the, a measure of the real power actually delivery 
to the circuit from the generator. Indeed, total the real power dissipate at heat in the resistant R1 and R2. The reactive component draw apparent power F from generator during one half cycle and supply reactive power during the other half. Apparent power supplied by generator a computer from generator voltage and the circuit current. Due to the phase shift introduced by reactive component, the apparent power F is greater than the real power P. The total real power P D dissipate at heat in this circuit is basically they will be dissipate to R1 and also R2. Okay, so you can calculate it and you can get either A or B or C. What I say you when you working on the AC left wall, when you're working with the power, then you can see this one. You find the total reactive power delivery by the generator. Total the reactive power from each reactive component. They will be positive for inductive and negative for capacity. Then Q total will be QL1. Basically, blood with minus QC1, the energy opposite. In this circuit, total reactive power introduced by C1 and L1. Okay, so basically you can get 2 volt C1, 3 volt L1. So you need to calculate the reactive power, okay, times I total. And you have to subtract the difference between C1 and L1. And that will be telling you, you get A or B or C. That's a very, just a very, very basic, okay? To calculate the power, reactive power C1, reactive power L1, then you add them up, make sure for the C, they will be negative. To determine the apparent power, which is the power supply by the generator, multiply the IMF circuit current by the IMF generator voltage. In this circuit, the apparent power at A, you already get the generator voltage. And also, you already get the current that you're able to calculate the apparent power. And apparent power, if I'm looking in here, I don't have to do calculation. I can now right away, A, B, or C, who telling me which one. A. Which one? A. C. C. Wow. I don't care about calculation. However, I'm looking to it. I say the first one is what? What is just a real power on the resistor? The second one is VAR. That will be a reactive power. And unit for VA, that for the hot brain power. Okay, that's a very 
a simple uh, lecture for the power. When you're working on the left board, also you will be, will be working on that power. Okay. So basically, we already get everything will be done for the AC. I try to see um, RF and we will continue on that. Okay, just a minute. Okay, so now we will start with the IF radio frequency. This just are for your knowledge. Okay, if you want to get more and more into the radio frequency IF, you have to learn a little more. Okay, first thing, they tell you electro magnetic spectrum from 30 hertz to 300 gigahertz, okay? So, so you can see um, what they call low frequency, medium, high frequency, VFF, UFF, okay? That will be telling you, okay? what frequency to what frequency. Yeah, high frequency, 3 megahertz to 30 megahertz. Very high frequency, 30 to 300 megahertz. Ultra high, okay? And super high frequency, extremely high frequency. Okay, so that just let you know, okay? They try to define for the electromagnetic spectrum. Frequency and wavelength. First thing, when you learn anything, Okay, the definition for sure you have to remember what is cycle, one complete occurrence of repeating way, such that one positive, one negative alternation of a side way. What is the frequency? You know the frequency, but sometimes they're asking for what is the frequency and you don't know. 
frequency, the number of cycle of signal that occur in one second period the time distance between two similar points of a periodic way. Wave length, the distance traveled by electromagnetic radio way during one period. Data reveal, you all know that is a filter, okay? And different filter. One filter section, two, three, four section. That will be the band path. And you can see the bandwidth is different. Okay? Bandwidth is a different between one filter or four filter. We already talking about one filter section, one pole. That means the circuit on the one R, one C. Two pole, two R, two C. Three pole, three R, three C. Four pole, four R, four C. The different A for the one pole or one filter section. Output will be going down 20 dB per decade. Some still do not understand about decade. They going down 20 dB per decade. That means when you get a cutoff frequency, Okay, go to 10 FC, that means one decade, okay? So, for a one pole, they're going down 20 dB. If a two pole, two section, they're going down 40 dB per decade, that means they will be cut off quickly. You see that? This is cut off better than the other one. Okay? And the best here will be four sections. Okay? They want the bandwidth to be small. They don't want wider bandwidth. That will be create more noise. And this will be just telling you different filter like temperature, electrical, but the word best cell. Okay. And this is just the, the noise. Okay. They call a ripple. So some get no noise, some get the more noise. Okay, basically you don't want the noise. And in here they telling you, this butter work, the cutoff is not good. The thing is, they, they go far away from a standard. So we already go to this thing for you guys in the future. And this will be another thing. They be telling you the sideway, okay? And the square way. Basically, this is a square way here. Square way basically combine a lot of sideway. And the sideway they can get the first one they call a fundamental. Okay? 
then the next one we not using the second harmonic. We using only odd harmonic, third harmonic. Okay, and keep going. And basically, just given you the picture in the square way, they will include more side way. Okay, more side way combined make it to be a square web. Complex waveform. A complex waveform. Is any no, signal? Yeah. So uh, 11 harmonics will make the perfect square wave, is that correct? I think, uh, I'm not sure. Okay. I, I, think we, I think in the past, didn't we say it was either seven or 11 harmonics would make the perfect square wave? More get better. However, when you're working on IF, and you have to measure the bandwidth, so basically, bandwidth of the square wave, they can go from fundamental up to which one? I would say 11, but thanks a lot. 13. Oh, 13? 13. Okay, thank you. The thing that I said, you can keep going, 13, 15, 17. However, they only want up to 13. Okay. Now, if they're asking you the bandwidth of one kilohertz sideway, what do I answer? What is the bandwidth of the one kilohertz sideway? Zero. Zero. You know why, how come they get zero? So basically, bandwidth equal F maximum minus F minimum. For one kilohertz, the maximum is one kilohertz. And the minimum also one kilohertz. So that's why the zero. If the question is, you get the square way, they can ask you what is the bandwidth of the square way. What can we do? Normally for square way, the bandwidth depending on the What we just talking about? Harmonic. The bandwidth depends on the harmonics. Exactly. So you have to ask him, ask him them what harmonic they want up to. Okay. Then you're able to calculate it or measure. So we want the, whatever harmonic it takes to make the perfect square wave. That's where we stop then. Yeah, normally they said things are normally measure up to 13. Okay. 13. Yeah, that's what you got on here at the very bottom where it says note. Yeah. Okay, thank you. We see it. Okay. Uh, square way, triangle way, sorted way. 
human voice, music, or digital data. That's what they call a complex waveform. Any periodic signal that is not pure sideway can be considered to be built out of the following components, a DC component, or average, which can be zero. A fundamental side wave that has the frequency exactly the same as the frequency of the signal. An infinite number of harmonic. A harmonic is a frequency that is exact multiple of the fundamental frequency. You get a note. In perfect square way, the there infinite number of frequency present, we only need to analyze up to 13 harmonic in order to get a descent reproduction of a square wave. You can say they did play on the oscilloscope square wave. Two volt, pick to pick, okay, and one kilohertz. And also, they selling you the frequency domain for picture for that square wave. So if you're looking on frequency domain, you see that is a frequency domain, okay? And that is a time domain. Time domain will be display on oscilloscope, and the frequency will be display on the spectrum analyzer. So if you're looking on that square wave on a spectrum analyzer, you can see one here mean one kilohertz. And they telling you what are the voltage. And three here, okay, that means harmonic. Then you get voltage, three kilohertz. At five kilohertz, you get that voltage, and so on. However, they want only up to 30. Don't want any more even they still kept going. And now also they show you one kilohertz square wave. Okay. So on the oscilloscope. And another one on the spectrum analyzer. It shows you, okay, one Kilohertz square wave, 100 millivolt per division. Okay, so the first one you get a fundamental, one kilohertz. Okay, third harmonic will be three kilohertz, fifth harmonic. Okay, and so on. Okay, and they can go up to 70 harmonic they will be a very, very small. Now, let's see what here. Square wave oscillator, one kilohertz. And when they go to the band part filter, three kilohertz, okay? And basically, you can see a square wave. They can get 
they can combine too many side way at a different harmonic. So when they go to the band pad filter, three kilohertz, that means any signal less than a little three, higher than a little three K, they allow to pass and the other one will be blocked. So that's why you can say third harmonic part, okay, only. And the, after that, less than third harmonic or higher than third harmonic will be blocked. That is the job of the band, band part filter. Okay, electronic communication is everywhere. What a TV broadcast or listen to the radio. You telephone, the remote control, and more. Electronic system. A system can be defined as a group of components that work together to complete a job or a task. A subsystem is just part of system. It has to complete a task. A subsystem is often so in the block diagram. Now, you can see on that thing here, this is the microphone. Okay? When you're talking into the microphone, they will be converting into electrical signal. And they go to the voltage amplifier. They make it bigger. Then they go to the power amplifier. And they go to the antenna. Okay? So they can pass your voice over the air. This is the transmission, transmitter, receiver. This is your phone on this side, okay? Basically, the signal transmitted over the air. They will be going into your phone, okay? You can get a bundled amplifier. They can get a power amplifier and they can go into the speaker. Let's see, a microphone is a type of transducer. It converts the pressure variation in a sound way into electrical energy. A transducer is any device that converting one form of energy into another. The transmitting antenna convert the amplified information signal into a new form of energy capable of traveling through space. That new energy equal electromagnetic energy or radio wave. Electromagnetic energy consists of two fields, a voltage or electric field and a magnetic field. It travels through the space at the speed of light which is about three times 10 power of eight meter per second. So basically, if you want to understand, you have to spend time, read over, 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 to get along with what they try to tell you. The thing is that new for most of the students. Transmitting antenna requirement Radio transmitting antenna need to be at least one quarter 
upwave a leg. Low. Audio frequency are low. We can hear. They are from 20 hertz up to 20,000 hertz. That be audio. An audio frequency that is in the middle of our hearing grand is a thousand hertz or one kilohertz. Let's calculate the wavelength of a one kilohertz electromagnetic wave. Lambda equal V divided to F. V will be three times 10 power of eight meter per second divide one kilohertz. And that given to you a 300 kilometer. Okay. Antenna need only be one quarter of the distance or 75 kilometer. Increase frequency on way the Create the wavelength. Decreasing frequency always increase the wavelength. Let's try to change it from one kilohertz to ten kilohertz. The lambda will be equal to thirty kilometer. An antenna, the length antenna, a thirty divide by four, 75, 7.5 kilometer. If frequency F equal 150 megahertz, then lambda equal two meter. And L antenna, how long antenna will be 0 0.5 meter. Okay, I will be continuing it tomorrow. However, I recommend to you, try to read up to this point, okay? When you're talking about the electromagnetic way, you see lambda equal V equal divide to F for one kilohertz, and lambda, that means the wavelength, equal 300 kilo per meter. And they said, if you want to make an antenna, antenna need only be one quarter of this distance, okay? That means to take 300 divide by four. So basically the antenna will be long 75 kilometer. If you increase the frequency all the way, decrease the wavelength. So basically the lambda will be small as much as possible. The thing is otherwise, they will be occupied the distance on the, in the air, okay? So if the low frequency, you can transmit it far as much as you can, okay? Like, you know, the signal transmitted over the air like exactly the car driving on the highway, okay? On the highway to get a hit land for, for the car, you have to drive on your land. Otherwise, you can get a problem. And that has same thing happen in the air. If you get the uh, lambda too big, that means basically you cannot transmit it much signal. In other for signal can be transmitted to many different signals. They have to bring it up to a very high frequency. Okay, lambda will be small, so more signal can go. 
okay? Otherwise, they can get a problem. So try to read it, try to understand modulation. 150 megahertz signal may be transmitted just fine. But there's one more problem. We cannot hear 150 megahertz. It is too high in the frequency. It is a solution. It called modulation. That that they tell you 150 megahertz signal. They can transmit it okay. The thing is they high. However, you cannot hear, okay, the voice in 150 megahertz. So that's why they come up with, they call it modulation. When we modulate a wave, we play the low frequency information signal onto it. The low frequency signal is just a long for the right. It is in effect carrier on top of the signal frequency, a high frequency signal. The high frequency signal is therefore they call a carrier signal. Your voice basically frequency very low. They can transmit it over the air. So in order to transmit it, they get the signal with the high frequency, bring your voice up, then transmit it. The signal bring uh, frequency using to bring the voice up high frequency. That's what they call carrier. Okay. So carriers, when they try to transmit it over the air, they get two signals. One is your voice, low frequency, and also another signal, high frequency, they call a carrier. Okay? So you understand A, hey, the signal at the low frequency cannot transmit it far away in the air. In order to do, they need to bring your voice up to the high frequency so they can transmit it. In order to do, they need what the frequency they call carrier. The carrier will be carry your voice in order to transmit over the air. Any question up to this point? If it's not, we will be continuing. And now, hello, Sam. Hello, Mr. Fan. Hello, Sam. Yes, Mr. Fan, I can hear you. You ready for the green number? Uh, yes, ready to go, sir. Okay, let me stop the guy. Okay. okay, so make sure you download the, the uh, AC quiz number seven handout from the website. Okay, so let me go ahead and start share the screen. Okay, let me see slideshow start from beginning.
Okay, so that's pretty much it. And just make sure you upload it to the website before 12 noon tomorrow, okay? Thank you, Sam. You're welcome, thank you. Okay, any other question before we call it a night? Okay, Mr. Fan, we're good. Okay, thank you, Sam. You're welcome, thank you. Okay, so if you don't get any more questions to me, okay, good night, everyone. Good night, thank you. Good night, thank you. You're welcome.